Ready? So let's first. Uh, here we go. Let's. Uh, let's. Uh, actually, uh, do two D first because the, uh, if you can figure out whatever nonlinear equation you you want to solve yourself. It's just a. Uh, so so for example, let's solve a two dimensional Poisson's equation. Let's solve uh, the divergence of the gradient of u plus f equal to zero. Right, so the divergence of gradient is a very common operator called the Laplace. And that's for, for uniform uh, um, material, that's basically also the heat equation in, in two dimensions. And how do you derive the weak form for that? It's the same thing. I'm going to multiply delta u with this whole thing and integrate it over a domain that has to be equal to zero, right? Okay, and uh, the integral on the left can be split, of course, into two parts. First part is the part that involves derivatives, and the second part is without derivatives. All right. So the second part is again as weak as we can hope it to be, but the first part we want to make u not necessarily second order differentiable. So what to do in that case? Taylor series integration by parts. Integration by parts, but in two D. So so how many people have seen integration by parts in two D? No, nobody. Okay, so so let me just uh, derive it for you. Integration by parsing 2D uses uh, something called uh, the Gauss's theorem or divergence theorem. How many people remembers that? I think we spent like, two weeks on it in 1802, like four years ago. Four years ago? No. Um, so divergence theorem says that <coughs> if I have a vector. Uh, what do we use for vectors? V? Huh? What? Okay. Okay. A divergence of V integrated over a domain that is equal to what? Is it the sum of the path integral around it and the integral? No, that's 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 something called the uh, uh, the Green's theorem. That that's that's a more com that's a that's a more complex variant of this. This is actually pretty simple. Like like in, in physics, uh, this oh, is a zero. Huh? Oh, so so this guy, for example, if uh, this V is electrical field, this is basically uh, how much charge right is in the volume. Uh, yes, you remember something? Is it the integral of the function over the area inside of it? No, this is the integral over inside, right? So, so remember, like if if this is the electrical field. Oh, see, it's the integral of the flux around. The yes, boundary. around the boundary. So, so for example, if this is the electrical field, then the divergence of the electrical field is uh, the the charge density, right? And the integral of the charge density is basically how much charge is within the volume. And uh, uh, that has to be equal to the boundary flux which I call partial omega. Partial omega is like the boundary of the domain omega of normal, outside normal dot with E. All right, that's... E yeah, E is... Uh, no, E field. is the same vector field. So this is... Oh, okay. This works for okay. any vector field so the, E. the vector times the normal vector gets you the flux through the... Yes, yeah, it's okay. the flux through yeah. the boundary. All right. So that's, uh, that's the divergence theorem. Okay, so then the integral of parts in 2D is basically a, a, a pretty trivial um, application of the divergence theorem. It is saying that if I have a scalar if I have a scalar phi and the vector E I can define my vector E as the product of the scalar phi times the vector E, uh, vector V, right? <coughs> and if I plug that into the Gauss's theorem, what I get is, okay, I have the divergence of phi times v 
would be equal to uh, the boundary integral of phi times n dot v. Right? Any questions on that? No? And now I can expand this part into two things. How can I expand this part? Like this is the derivative of the product. Yeah, product rule, but in that case. So the product rule works like this. I have the gradient of the scalar phi dot with vector v. All right. So that's one term. Another term is what? Somebody tell me. Uh, phi times uh, yes, phi times divergence of v, vx. All right. So integration by parts is basically if you have the divergence on the vector and you don't want it, you can replace this with this minus that instead, right? You can if you don't want the divergence. You can put the divergence as a gradient on the scalar instead. Or if you have a gradient of a scalar dot with the vector and you don't want the gradient, you can remove the gradient from the scalar and put it as a divergence on the vector instead. And the, the cost is, first of all, you have to put a negative sign because you have to move one of these onto the other side. And also, you get this boundary term, which actually has no derivatives, right? It has neither divergence nor gradient. Great. All right. So so that's integrated by parts. So let's say this is one, two, three, right? So integrated by parts in uh, the vectors is either saying one can be replaced by three minus two, or two can be replaced by three minus one, right? So either one of these can be called integration by parts. Question about this? Okay. Now look at our formula, we have delta u, a scalar, all right, times the divergence of grad u, which is a vector. And we want this vector to be out of this, what, divergence, right? So we can put this divergence as a gradient on this delta u instead. So, continue on our derivation we have now instead of a plus we have a minus of grad delta u dot with grad of u dx right and we have a boundary term the boundary term is grad omega which denotes the boundary of delta u times the normal dot with grad of u. Okay, and I'll copy the uh, the third term. This has to be zero. Now that's the weak form of this differential equation. For example, if we have Dirichlet boundary condition all over the boundary, then what is my delta u all over the boundary? Zero. So we get rid of the entire term. All right. So that's the simplest case in deriving the Poisson's equation. You may also see that another simplest case is when grad u dot n is also equal to zero or along the boundary. So that term also goes away. But usually that doesn't have a solution. All right. So uh, so the Newman boundary condition in the two-dimensional or three-dimensional case actually says that uh, the, it, it, you cannot specify that the gradient of u completely as a vector equal to zero on the boundary. You can only specify the normal derivative, which is this, right? n dot with the gradient is the normal derivative of u equal to something. It kind of makes sense because uh, if, for example, if u is temperature, the normal derivative of temperature is basically heat flux, which you specify, right? Okay. 